Hello and welcome to today's presentation given to you by the CHAPS program at the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley about the Civil War on the Rio Grande. Little known facts about the Rio Grande Valley during the US Civil War era are one such that what we have learned as follows. Did you know that? 53 lieutenants who served in the United States Army against the Mexican Army at the Battle of Palo Alto in 1846 became generals in the armies of the Union and the Confederacy during the American Civil War. One such person was Ulysses S. Grant, who would eventually become the 18th President of the United States. Did you know that? Colonel Robert E. Lee of the United States Army had visited Ringgold Barracks in Rio Grande City before the Civil War. He stayed in this house, the Commandant's Quarters at Ringgold Barracks, which is now available to be visited at Fort Ringgold in Rio Grande City. And in the late 1850s, he was in Texas in San Antonio and was sent down to Ringgold Barracks to deal with a person along the Rio Grande named Nepo Museno, Juan Nepo Museno Cortina. Did you know that borderland families were in both the Union and Confederate armies? And as you know, in 1861, Texas became a Confederate state. And there were already plenty of ranches set up along the Rio Grande, along the U.S.-Mexico border at that particular time. And so at various points throughout the U.S. Civil War, when control of the region changed hands between the U.S. Army and the Confederate Army, members of different family ranches along the Rio Grande mustered in to units such as the Texas, the 2nd Texas U.S. Cavalry, a Union uh, unit. Patricio Perez is here in the image on the second from the left, and he had mustered into the 2nd Texas U.S. Cavalry. And then there was a unit running through Hidalgo County called Captain Thomas's Company of Partisan Rangers. And there were several members of other uh, ranches along the Rio Grande who had mustered into this unit, in particular Ramon Salinas, who was related to Patricio Perez. And Ramon Salinas was from Carnesto Lenda's Ranch, which is what we know today as Rio Grande City, Texas. And in Cameron County, there was a group called Trevino's Partisan Rangers, where they had mustered in folks along the Rio Grande in that area. Did you know that the highest ranking Spanish speaking officer in the Confederate Army was Colonel Santos Benavides of Laredo, who was in charge of the 33rd Texas Confederate Cavalry known as Benavides's Regiment. And he is a descendant of Tomas San Sanchez, who was the original Spanish land grantee of what we know today as Laredo, Texas. And he went on to a prominent political career in the Texas state legislature after the US Civil War. Did you know that just south of the border in Mexico across the Rio Grande, a civil war was raging between Benito Juarez and the Mexican Republican Army and Emperor Maximilian and the Mexican Imperial Army. Did you know that? In 1861, the Confederate Treasury had $47 million in it, which at that time in 1861, made the Confederate States of America the fifth largest country in the world, or the fifth wealthiest country in the world at that time. And during the Civil War, cotton trade, amongst other items that were traded along the Rio Grande, 
generated over $162 million, which in today's currency translates into $2.9 billion. So this amount of money helped to keep the Confederacy afloat throughout the Civil War. So had the Union Army, the United States Union Army from the North, been able to successfully halt this trade, the Civil War could have ended perhaps a year earlier and hundreds of thousands of lives would have been saved. So in all total throughout the US Civil War on both sides, there were over 600,000 deaths and 400,000 permanently disabled and maimed people as a result from their injuries in incurred during the war. So this is the largest and most deadly conflict that United States soldiers have been involved with in all time. Here we have our 200 mile trail tourism guide map. And it runs from the mouth of uh, the river at Boca Chica Beach along Highway 4. And it runs a 200 mile trail along Highway 281 into Highway 83, all the way up to Laredo. If you are interested in attaining one of these or obtaining one of these maps, you can give us a call or send us an email at the contact information that'll be at the end of this slide. We'd also like to let you know that we've written a few books with regard to the Civil War on the Rio Grande. Uh, the one all the way to the to the right is an easier reading book with regard to the Civil War era in the Lower Rio Grande Valley. It is available on lulu.com for $9.99. And the other two books were published by Texas A&M Press. The one on the left is a scholarly edited anthology that was written by seven, uh, 11 scholars. So there are 11 different essays with regard to events and people and subject matters that have to do with the Civil War along the Rio Grande. And it is available through Texas A&M Press and, and various other outlets. And the book in the middle is our tourism guidebook that you might want to buy if you're going to actually drive the trail or not. But it gives um, very in interesting information, not only about the counties that are along the US-Mexico border between Brownsville and Laredo, but it provides detailed information about the sites along the trail, about museums and hours of operation, and a lot of other interesting items that you might be interested in. Here underneath each one is the QR code, and you can feel free to snap those codes uh, on, your, on your smart device, and it'll take you exactly where you need to go to purchase these books. So I'd like to thank you for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed the presentation. Please feel free to visit our bilingual website uh, at www.utrgv.edu forward slash civil war dash trail. You can email us at chaps at utrgv.edu and, and request a map or find out where you can find one near you or call us at 956-665-8161. Check us out on Facebook, like us on Facebook, and follow us as well.